decided to have another go at painting these persimmon. I had a go yesterday. It was the first time I painted them. I have to say I rather enjoyed it. But I just thought I'm going to have a go and just have a go now at doing two. I don't know if really the square format's going to work, but we'll have a go and have a see how this works out. So I'm working on a no, that's going to be too small, isn't it? Let's go a bit bigger. I'm working on a, a panel, it's MDF, which I have covered in linen. I bought a big roll of linen and I covered several boards with it. And then I, this colour is what it was, is just the paint that was left on my palette at the end of the day. And rather than throw it away, I'd scoop it up and have a selection of boards handy and I just paint over them just just to kill the white also makes quite a nice surface really working over on top of oil let's just get these leaves in these leaves are all dried and crumpled I've never seen a person with the fret they must have fresher green leaves when they're first picked it'd be quite nice to have a go at those rather than these dry shriveled things but it's what we see in the supermarkets isn't it um, just hold the brush up. They are actually, this one's slightly forward. This one, no, it can't be, just a second. Yeah, it looks it, even though it's just behind this one. Right, let's get the centre of that in. And this is just a, a thin mix of ultra and burnt umber that I'm using to draw with diluted with white spirit mm -hmm. let's just I can just see the back of that between behind that do you know I'm going to just drop my eye level I'm just going to yeah I'm going to drop my eye level I'm just going to bring that that down a little bit I don't like to see it going straight I usually put that on a diagonal the reason I'm doing that is because this glow on the top I want to have that against a nice dark background, so I'm not going to fiddle with that for much longer. So I've got, um, I'm using black and ultramarine with a touch of uh, uh, ultra, ultramarine, yeah, ultramarine black and alizarin crimson I'm using here. So I'll get that colour in, I want that nice and dark. Not using the paint very thick, I'm following the general rule of the thumb that the darks are thin and the and the lights are much thicker. Let's get that in, bring that down. There isn't as much of a line to see there anyway, is there? Let's just see how I get with this. Bring that down a little bit more. Added a bit more blue to it. I don't know if you've noticed this device that I'm using. It's something I made. It's it's two pieces of it's, it's actually foam board. The piece at the bottom to support and this slides out so let me just be careful how i do this so i don't lose everything this slides in and out so it will take different sizes but it, it holds a small panel quite nicely so that you don't lose it in the grooves of the easel very useful actually So now I'm going to start looking. I'm going, I think I'm going to actually start with my highlights. This is something I haven't done before. I usually work towards the lights, but I'm actually going to try this approach. So I've this isn't pure white. It's white with a touch of lemon yellow in it. And there's a lovely highlight on this one, because quite often if I try and put a highlight on top of thick paint, it won't stick. So I'm starting off with the highlight. 
and working towards the darks. This is something I haven't tried before, but the reason I'm doing these studies now is I really just want to have a go and try different approaches. I want to try different backgrounds and see how how they work. So this, uh, not sure exactly which colour this is I've got here. Let me have a rummage and see. I think it's that one, which is, oh, I can't even read that. No, it's an old Holland paint, but I can't I can't see what the label is anymore. But that's what this one is. So if anyone knows, you can let, let me know. <laughs> I'll have a look later when I've got my glasses on. So this is the lightest orange I've got on my palette. I've got several oranges here. My One of my favourites I shall be using is this one. It's called Permanent Orange. And that's a Michael Harding colour. I shall tell you when I come to use that one. Um, right, so this is still light over here. The, I'm just using neat paint. I'm not diluting it at all. I've lost the little bit of white that was in my brush. So I'm looking now for just the highlights. It gets much richer over here. So now I'm going to go and use my Michael Harding paint. I'm mixing the first bit I'm putting on. I'm mixing it with this colour that I've already put on rather than going straight into the richer colour. thing is when you're putting it on, try not to spread the paint about too much, um, mix it up too much. These are actually both the same colour. I have got some more persimmon that are actually quite a yellowy looking colour. Picked out the ones that got the richest colour. Yeah, and also use the biggest brushes you've got as well when you're doing something like this. If you've got a small brush, you tend to fiddle a bit. Now, this is neat paint now. It's much darker on that edge. I shall come to that in a minute. This is where an accurate drawing helps. Nice and neat, thick paint. Lovely. Oh, gorgeous, isn't it? Now I'm going to add, for that darker edge, I'm using cadmium red. For that dark edge there. I'm letting it blend in a little bit with the black in the background. Now it's very dark, it comes really dark. In fact, it's so dark, I'm going to add a touch of alizarin. If you want to darken a red, if you use blue, it kills it. But if you use alizarin, it still keeps that lovely richness that you get. Right, let's just put that dark in there. Now, do I see it anywhere else? Yeah, actually, it's very dark. It is much darker there as well. But coming down, there's a reflected light on that edge to look at and get that just a little bit dark under here and going back to my lovely neat orange that's reflected light there you really do have to look hard when you're doing something like this and actually the harder you look the more you see I like to see the brush marks in something like this. Got to keep that light there. It's a bit dark, a bit of shadow there. And coming down under here. So I'm going to have to start looking at getting the shadows. Just put this light in while I think about it. So that's light against that darker edge. It has picked up some of the colour that I was drawing with there. I'll come back to that. So that's now I've got this brush that I use. The brushes I'm using, by the way, are rosemary brushes. This is number six, uh, Eclipse, long, flat, beautiful brush. So I'm, I'm starting off, I've got, this is King's Blue Light. Well, as you can see, that's quite a strong colour. So I'm going to 
just take it down a little bit with some I've got some Naples light so I'm just mixing a little bit of Naples light into it and you can see that that's much softer now I'm also putting a little bit of white oh no I was going to do the shadows oh let's see that's what comes of trying to talk and paint and think now I can multitask a little bit but no, it's probably too light, so I'm going to wait wait on that a bit. I'm going to go back and do what I intended doing. Let's mix the shadow. So I've got my King's Blue. I've mixed it with red. Let's get that. may not be dark enough you probably hear the dogs in the background we've got a squirrel that now keeps coming to visit the bird feeder and it drives them nuts yeah that's nice and colorful actually it's it's not probably quite dark enough i'm going to just go give it the contrast. I've added more ultramarine just underneath there to give a bit more contrast. Yep, that definitely sounds like the squirrels making a visit. Okay, now I can go back to using my lighter colour. Maybe still a bit blue. I used quite a strong blue in yesterday's painting. That one's got a dip in it, I've just noticed. I can correct that. Too much yellow in that. That's better. The, the surface the persimmons are sitting on are actually quite a a flat colour. Bring that through. It's in trying to introduce a little bit of colour. Let's see if we can just put a bit of a few touches of orange in. It just helps to carry colours through a little bit. It's almost as if it's reflected. Those dogs, obviously. Okay. I can come back to that. I think I need to look at this edge. What you can do is let's just clean brush with white spirit on it and just lift that off that's my cloth just lift that back off there and that's the best shape and i should be able to put some color on that now without um, lifting the black into it so now I'm going to look at doing the um, the dried up leaves. I've got this lovely colour that's a golden green. Um, I know I can mix into that. I can mix. Let's have a look. I've got 
nice dark in there and let's try and get that wasn't dark enough i'm slightly distracted by those dogs barking they're not usually this bad i probably just a touch darker than that a bit more ultra that's better need a few good contrasts and that edge there is dark so i'm using the golden green and mixing ultra into it so it's not quite as dark as it is in there but it's still pretty dark Frank's appeared on the scene. I can hear him telling them to shut up. <laughs> right. This is much lighter here, so I'll just come back to that in a minute. I've used um, Naples yellow to lighten that. Using white, it would have lightened it just too much. So Naples is quite a nice, it's um it's an opaque colour, so it uh, does quite a nice job there. I'll just use, I am going to put some white in. I've used white, but I've added a little bit of Indian yellow to it, so it's translucent, just to keep that out. It's a nice colour. That's better. And down here, not quite light enough there. A bit more of the um, Naples light, that's it, that's better. There we go, and that just sticks up there, catching the light on that one. Lovely. Just got to do the center in there. Let's come back to this orange again and get this no, it needs the cadmium red in that, so let's put some cadmium red in that. Get that better shape. If the if it's too sharp an edge, I often use the end of the brush. And just soften it like that. So we haven't got the hard line. You still got the shape, but you don't see the the hard line. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yes, I will need a small brush now and I'm going to put a reflected light. We've got the, let's go for the lemon yellow and add a touch of the orange into it. Might be light enough, I don't know. Let's just try that reflection there. Using my little finger there to steady my hand. That's not light enough. Looks light on the palette, but when you come to put it on, it isn't. Right, try again. It's still not quite as light as I can see. It's just a lovely glow in there. It might have to wait until it's dried. It's picking up rather a lot. So I'm going to now I'll come back to this um, original colour that I put on here. some dirt on the brush. Let's pick that up, clean that off. Let's come back and I want to just soften this. Now I'm going to use my brush again for the end of it just to soften that line and here. And I will just try to tighten if I can get it in the middle supposed to be pure white but it's obviously orange on my brush there we go that's the pure white now i'm going to use the rigger this is a rosemary again um it's very fine it's a beautiful brush actually mix a little bit of uh, a pale green so i'm using the white now with my green gold painting 
my hand pick up that sort of light colours on the edges of this this is much lighter on that edge and just here and line that edge there so it's nice and nice little highlight on there picked up over here Painted inside a little head there. Let's try that burnt sienna there with whatever's still on my brush. And there's a little light bit just in the center. Yeah. Well, I think I'm just going to call that a do. Oh, no, I'm not. Just a minute. I want to get rid of this hard edge. I'm using my, um, I've got a bristle brush here, just to soften that line there. Because it's a bit of a distraction. Your eye will often go to the strongest contrast and to straight lines. So I've got this straight line here to lose that. Yeah. I can see other things that I could do to fiddle with, but I, I really ought to stop at this point. She says, picking up a brush. There we go. I just wanted to soften, bring that in. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to call this a do at that. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.